And we are still at day 13. I took this uh, Volga uh, country and uh, I left the capital because I'm going to take another one to boost up the uh, morale so it's no risk of leaving there. I built a couple of more railways here in Sofia and in Rostov. Uh, they are both material provinces, and I want to make sure I keep building and do it in the right places so I can just reduce my uh, traveling time between my fronts. This is a good big uh, province, so it goes quick to connect these together. And the Rostov is, of course, because I'm building a potty soon ready. Same here and same in Luhansk. So it makes sense to build in between also to just keep on this highway between the fronts. Other uh, things happening now actually also. Uh, we see Kazakhstan moving here, but let's get back to that. This guy, he's active again. Uh, the... British Pakistan. I think it's the second time he goes inactive and then come back. And what he did, he took all of his all of his guys, his army, and just sent it towards uh, British Madras here. And of course, as soon as he did that, Pakistan started to oh no, Kazakhstan started to invade. So, as I said before, I think they are working together. It could be a multi-account, I don't know. They could just be friends. Uh, or this guy just fed up, so he's going to leave and let Kazakhstan have everything. Uh, I don't know. I don't really care. It's not something I'm going to report either. Things like that happen, for sure. Uh, and they don't have to be working together. Uh, so, these eight guys going towards here look a bit threatening to me, but I am very sure, 99% sure that he's going for Saranj. And the quickest road from from Mashhad to there is actually going this way around, because then he doesn't have to travel in enemy territory. So they're going to come here and they're going to switch. Uh, they're going to turn to Saranj for sure. And if not, I have I have artillery and guys in the area, so I can I can Fill up my defenses easy. And actually, I think this is good because this uh, Kazakhstan guy is uh, just like Greece before, he can't handle his economy. Check here 27%, 42, that's high, 40, 37, 30, 25, 26. It's just uh, messing everything up. So it's good that. He can take more provinces. I will kill him later for sure. It will be no problem. But I want to clear out the Arabia first. And after that, I will just make full attack on Kazakhstan. And of course, it's better if he has another 8 to 10 provinces that I can get fairly cheap. So, now... It's time for a tutorial on how to take an AI country with zero loss, zero casualties of your own. I have put my uh, cruiser here in position. I have put this artillery in position. And these two is all I need together with some guys to take out these 32 men in total and don't get killed at all myself. I have an extra artillery here also, because it was in the area, but that really doesn't add to this equation at all. So first I'm going to put this in motion so it doesn't attack unintentionally and uh, mess my plans up. So now I'm going to declare war. So this is going to start firing there and he's going to leave them for there. Okay, first I start moving these guys they are so quick i put my 11 here on the border i can't go in further without 
without declaring war. So I put them there to be prepared. And this guy will start firing on Basra automatically. So these guys go there and these guys go there out here to hunt my cruiser. Meaning it will leave Nayaf uh, totally unguarded and Basra. Normally AI sends out all infantry except one. So probably there will be one left here and one left here. And there will be no trouble for me to take because I have 11 units in each place. So 11 against one. And let's see what happens. If my calculations are right. This one is still moving. Yes, good. I don't need that. Click on the nation profile. Show in diplomacy. My relation was right away to keep him happy. And I changed to war. Declare war and start fighting. Okay. Here we go. They attack each base as planned, of course. 10 guys go there and 20 guys go here. Okay, good. As planned. Now, they will reach in 52 minutes taking this. And they will reach 1 hour and 50 minutes taking that. And once I take both of these, the remaining units from, from this country automatically dies. So it's one hour and 50 minutes. And this guy, he will not reach my city within this one hour and 50 minutes. It's probably going to be like another half an hour or so. So I will take it before it reaches there. Uh, just for fun, now I can use this. Let's uh, take a hit. It doesn't matter if I take this one hit. Maybe it goes up to face me. I can hit the 10. So say it really doesn't do any extra. Uh, let's hit this one. So we see. They're close to each other. So maybe it takes a hit on this one instead. It doesn't really matter. Yep. It started going here. It's good. Then we can meet. I can take it out and then take this. It's as easy as that. So, why don't we fast forward a couple of hours to see how this ends? Let's do that. And now we're back. I took this Nayaf. Simple enough without losses. He's got two hours almost to reach my city and we'll be dead within a couple of seconds. I just I'll tell you, I switched uh, focus on this to hit the last one. Uh, so one hour later than the first hit, he leaves also. And I sent two guys ahead a little bit with Force Mars to, to take this just to save some time. And they're actually now about 23 minutes away, which means they're close enough to engage if I give them any command whatsoever. So I just stop them and we will take Basra. There we go. And his whole army disappeared as planned. So in an hour and a half, I took out 32 men, two provinces, one capital, and no losses of my own. Perfect. Now we can reroute this one so it goes a bit quicker. And of course, here's the next guy. Why wait? I'm going to start with him also. Let's put this in uh, position and then I will tack. But you know already how this works, so I don't have to show you again. So thanks for watching.